Hey everyone, hope you guys are doing well. Uh, this is going to be an interesting uh, vlog, I suppose. Um, straight up, I tested positive for COVID. So I am currently living with COVID uh, and I'm on day four of symptomatic, of it presenting sim symptoms. Uh, so today is Saturday, September. 26th um, I so I this video will serve as a documentation of this time for myself and also I think it's neat uh, to be honest uh, it's something that I think a lot of people are interested in coronavirus but I actually haven't seen too many uh, videos or I don't know anyone personally that has COVID um, so this video is also I hope that it will help inform people of what the experience is like for myself uh, and add to because it's a brand new virus add to the collective knowledge base uh, that we are collectively producing of this new virus so um, I'll probably go through uh, my symptoms uh, the situations and uh, how I feel and stuff so um, overall I feel all right uh, I definitely recognize that I'm sick right now uh, I'm not a hundred percent I would say I'm probably about 60 percent uh, 60 percent mental and physical capability in terms of energy wise um, I can communicate comfortably um, but uh, the biggest thing for me is headaches um, so that's how I knew oh that's what prompted me to go get COVID tested on Wednesday so at the first sign of any kind of symptomatic presentation I that was what which was Wednesday I started not feeling great Wednesday afternoon and that's when I went to go get COVID tested after work uh, and so at that time uh, I similar to now and throughout uh, the symptoms that I experienced and this is just for me is uh, headaches that was the first major uh, symptom uh, so headaches it's a kind of like a pain uh, in the like in the middle of the back left I would say so that's how it presented for me and also a lower energy level um, so on Wednesday afternoon that's basically how I felt and I was like oh seems kind of weird uh, I described it before as feeling blah and uh, that's what prompted me to go get COVID tested and um, Thursday, Thursday I would say hit me the hardest and I my alarm clock went off to go to work. Uh, I work from home. I haven't been in the office since March. Um, <coughs> that's just me swallowing my saliva improperly. <coughs> that is not a COVID cough. Uh, <laughs> COVID-induced cough. Uh, that's uh, me swallowing improperly. Wrong, wrong, uh, wrong tube. Uh, cough. Uh, apologies. So, um, Wednesday morning, woke up, go to work uh, in my home office, uh, and I was like, man, I feel pretty tired. So, you know what? I'm actually going to call it and say, you know, I'm going to take Thursday morning off. So I messaged my team, said, hey, sorry, I'm gonna, I gotta take Thursday morning off. I'm gonna see how I feel in the afternoon. I wake up around uh, 12, 31. So I, I'd slept about 12 hours uh, and it was fairly good sleep. My sleep thankfully hasn't really been affected. Um, so around that time when I woke up, I was still not feeling good, mostly that headache and lack of, and lack of energy. I didn't really have any cough. Not no real runny nose. Uh, I would say maybe a mild sore throat, but not really. Um, no fever, and but I knew I didn't feel good, so 
uh, at one o'clock or around 12 something, I was just like, yeah, sorry, I, I got to take the whole uh, Thursday off, uh, which is what happened. And I, on Thursday, I would say there wasn't much that I could do. Um, and so I basically lounged around and I would say I, I was about like 10% energy levels uh, and physical and mental capability. Uh, it was a headache throughout the entire day and at night probably around 11 or midnight or something I sent a note to my team saying that hey Friday morning I'm gonna take Friday morning off because uh, I still don't feel good as of Friday, Thursday night and so I'm gonna take Friday morning off uh, to sleep in and I'm gonna try to get back at it on Friday afternoon um, so Friday thankfully I woke up around 1030 and I felt much better um, but still headache and still low energy. But I would say I, I was about 50%. And, uh, but then by like around 1231, kind of similar thing, like, I mean, if I really pushed it, I could do it, but I just felt like there wasn't that need to really like turn on my afterburners and go nuts on, on going to work on a Friday afternoon. Um, thankfully my team is phenomenal like everyone so like the people that I messaged on the Friday morning or on the Thursday night that they received Friday morning when they received the message that I was still not feeling well some of them I had meetings for Friday afternoon and they had already rescheduled those meetings for me for another day um, to clear up my schedules to that and they recommended that I just take the whole day off just take the whole Friday off uh, instead of just taking the half day and then coming in for Friday afternoon. Um, so basically, that's exactly what I did. So at like one, I was like, ah, man, yeah, I got to take, I'm going to take the rest of the day off just because it's probably better in the long run, even though seeing their message uh, actually made me want to go to work even more because they were such nice people and such considerate people. I didn't want to let them down uh, by not going to work on Friday afternoon. Um, but uh, alas, I recognize like, you know, I'm only doing so much on a Friday afternoon uh, when everyone else is canceling the meeting anyways. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so Friday was like that. And then today I, I feel even better. Uh, I feel probably around 60%. Um, and I got the call from my doctor actually. So I, I've been checking the Ontario Public Health uh, COVID assessment results like constantly. Um, it says results not available, which is the first time that I've seen this message uh, after you enter in your health card information and everything like that. So I thought, so I had that already yesterday and I thought, oh, that was weird. Um, and I've done the, the COVID test probably about five times, uh, about once a month. But it's been so like once every six weeks or so. Um, so my doctor, I got a call from the doctor uh, around four o'clock today, and it's about uh, eight thirty or nine right now. And so I only found it a few hours ago. So my doctor's like, "Hey, uh, how's it going?" and stuff like that. Super friendly. Uh, I was like, so you went to get a COVID test? And like, what's going on? Uh, I told him the whole the, the spiel that you just heard basically in a very condensed version. He said, yeah, they called me and said, uh, like, yeah, you tested positive. And I was, so my first reaction actually was like, wow, that's cool. Like in terms of like not cool as in, this is wonderful, but cool as in, Wow, I'm curious as to how my body will respond to this basically alien disease, this disease that humanity has not seen before. So it was, I was excited and curious uh, now knowing and having a diagnosis for what I was feeling. Um, interestingly, I would say compared to the flu, which I probably had like, I don't know, like three years ago or something like that. Uh, I didn't feel as bad as when I had the flu. 
uh, thankfully because I think for me the symptom uh, fever did not present itself to me uh, in my symptoms and I had body aches uh, but uh, no fever thankfully so um, so now I forgot where it was but <laughs> so my doctor calls and says that uh, so he says quarantine and I said yeah but I've been quarantining uh, ever since I've presented some symptoms uh, I didn't really think it was COVID but you know obvious, obviously just to be safe you assume that you have it and uh, that's what I did same with every other previous COVID test that I had I got tested and then I just even though I was asymptomatic for all those previous tests I still waited until you get the result before you go out um, just in case because you can be asymptomatic and be a carrier and transmit it to others so um, so he's like yeah just keep quarantining I was like yep yeah, I'll do that and so I was feeling very excited but and I'm having like multiple different emotions and thoughts in like literally a split second so it's like a sense of like cool like I'm so curious to see what happens to my body and how how like what symptoms how it will evolve and stuff when I experience it versus reading about what happens about to other people and then in the same like millisecond it's oh no like oh my gosh it's like tremendous guilt and uh, uh, fear for my roommates uh, one of which is 71 who's actually probably the healthiest one out of all of us um, but uh, just thinking oh shoot did I get someone else would I have transmitted to someone else um, and like who else could I have transmitted it to um, like an uber driver or something like that or did I even get it from an uber driver or something like that um, so an Uber Eats, sorry, uh, or any food delivery service, not particularly Uber Eats. Uh, <laughs> app agnostic, any delivery service or going to Walmart or something like that. Um, but basically anyone who I may have infected, uh, I felt tremendous guilt and regret um, for potentially harming and uh, thankfully Benson, my other uh, roommate, uh, so I called Larry actually right away. Uh, which he didn't pick up, but he eventually called me back, and I just said, "Yo, I got COVID, and and uh, like you gotta go get tested." And he was like, "Oh shoot," uh, but uh, you know, very supportive and everything like that. And same with Benson, like uh, um, he was just. I gave him a call, even though he lives downstairs. I was outside. I'm basically always outside, anyways. Uh, now I have to be outside. Uh, instead of by choice, I now reinforce the time being outside because I am forced as well as wanting to be outside in general. But uh, I called Benson and he said, uh, and I told him, and I said, dude, I got COVID, I just got, you know, my doctor just called me and said I tested positive, so like, you should go, uh, go get tested and, you know, uh, and he did. And he's, uh, again, very like accommodating and, uh, he hasn't at least blamed me outright. Uh, he feels fine. Uh, so uh, that was uh, another thought. So one is like, cool, what, a, what an interesting experience my body and mind will go through. I wonder what that will be like. And then, oh shoot, like, I hope I didn't cause anyone any pain from, from being exposed somehow uh, to me. And then uh, at the same time as well is fear of judgment and a fear of uh, being an improper steward of of the shield idea um, for which I'm uh, patenting and so like basically this thing so now basically I wear this when I go inside um, just to, just to you know, contain my 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 germs, but uh, like, will people think less of the product 
um, knowing that the founder and inventor of it has caught the disease. And so that's one of the fears that I have and one of the thoughts that immediately came to mind and fear that I wasn't good enough to represent this idea or this concept that that has come to me but am I the right am I the appropriate and the best steward of this idea to bring it to life or would someone else be better for it um, so the way for me to counter those unhelpful thoughts are really one I try to think that like hey like maybe I mean that is that is a possible outcome of this of disclosing this so publicly uh, willingly uh, disclosing this um, that people will think less of me and think less of the invention uh, or this idea that came to me uh, that I am continuing to refine. They may assume that I contracted it while wearing it. Uh, I don't know. Uh, so the source of how I contracted it uh, is purely speculative at this point. Um, so maybe I'll talk a little bit about that later. But um, the thoughts to counter the, um, the thoughts that I have that people may think negatively of my product and thus will lead to it not living out to its fullest potential to protect people uh, is the fact that masks are already a proven guard against COVID and yet our numbers are still going up um, and it's not like everyone who's getting COVID are irresponsible people um, and it's not like every doctor or every nurse and every healthcare practitioner that has been affected by COVID, I bet you they were all wearing a lot of PPE, a lot of, they were wearing their masks uh, when they were in the hospital, but they still got sick. They were taking every precaution, they were washing their hands. And yet we have nurses and doctors that get sick, uh, that contract COVID. Uh, and so I, I have to then counter the thoughts when I have the thoughts of like oh shit like or uh, oh no people are going to discount the idea and this idea will not live out its potential in this world then I think well you know what like people are getting sick wearing anything right now like people get sick wearing the normal mask that we are encouraged to wear and we're still getting sick and we're at a level now that it's community transmission we don't know the and our contact tracing has limits. So we don't know all the sources by which the transmission is happening. And so I have to remind myself of that to try to remove the guilt because it's unhelpful to have that um, as I go through the process of continuing to refine this uh, because I still believe in the product. And uh, just for you guys to be aware, I'm not wearing this all the time as the inventor of this I'm always I'm not tied particularly to this idea but I'm tied to protecting our society and so I'm always trying out different masks when I go out so it's not like just because I made this I'm like completely biased and then I only use this uh, for example in in Peterborough in the shoot that I did the photo, photo shoot uh, in case people don't know I am a photographer uh, I photograph for uh, for a Quebecois company that does commercial fridges and um, I don't know if you can remember from that Instagram story that I did uh, for example for that day for that entire day I didn't use the mask or the shield sorry and I just used a bandana as my as my mask and so I had I had it down here and then you just pull up the bandana uh, whenever someone is nearby uh, or whenever you feel the need to uh, so that's another allowable the uh, now another allowable way to protect yourself and so for that whole day 
uh, that was the PPE that I used because I wanted, because like I want to continue to refine the idea to develop the best PPE that I could. And so I'm obviously trying all sorts of different PPEs. I've tried basically every single mask, the classical uh, mask uh, around just to experience what it's like to see, is this something that many people will benefit from or does it still have the same constraints and limitations of the current mask design? And so in this continual exploration, I am experimenting as well with these different masks. So I hope that that will provide some confidence in people uh, that, uh, or the people that, especially people that, if you still believe in the idea, to know that I'm not wearing just this mask all the time and like, oh, like, oh, this guy made this mask and he still got COVID, so how protective is it? Uh, so, like, just know that I wear all sorts of different masks as part of my research and development, basically. Uh, and I'll wear it for prolonged periods of time to see how other form factors perform with my requirements and what I expect people will require of their PPE. So, uh, please keep that in mind. Um, and also know that I am still getting the patent and that is still in development. I am still in talks with my lawyer. And uh, I already have many ideas to uh, enhance it, uh, but this already is providing a good layer of protection. I still feel and I still believe that given the current options available, this will either provide good protection or as, as a standalone or as a supplementary coverage for protecting against, against the virus. So um, I still fully believe in this. I still think it works. I still breathe much better in this than any other. And it's still like I cannot, <coughs> I wouldn't be able to cough on you even if I try or speak moistly to you if I tried. Uh, so there is that thought as well. So there's three major thoughts that I had thinking about being COVID positive. That's pretty, I'm curious to see what will happen. I feel very sorry if anybody feels pain as a result of, as a result of me and uh, I fear that it's that I'm not as good of a steward to bring this idea to life uh, and thus to maximize the effectiveness and the benefit that this idea can have to society uh, because at some point I must have been reckless and not washed my hands or accepted or touch the bottle or something like that or rub my eyes uh, when I was in Peterborough or something like that or, or while wearing the mask I don't know um, and thus reduce the yeah effectiveness that this would have uh, to benefit people so those were the three primary thoughts that all happened in like a split second when thinking about the uh, the possibility or, or finding out the confirmation that I am COVID positive. The, this is turning out to be a really long video, sorry. I should have prepared what I was gonna say before recording, but I'm not doing another take um, or a second take. So the other thing is how did I get infected? Um, I would say, I don't know. I would say that would be the honest answer. I don't know. It's a uh, community transmission at this rate, so I don't know of anyone that has COVID, as I mentioned. So I don't, I don't, I didn't knowingly contract or take any risk. Um, yeah, I cannot pinpoint like, oh yeah. The only like, I mean, I was at in Peterborough. I had my. Like, it's really funny that, like, what you're 
whole face being covered is the new, like you go into a Tim Hortons because, so Benson wanted, I'm gonna tell this side story, sorry, I'm like all over the place. So Benson went into these like uh, Peter Bro Pete's, uh, a gift card that had Peter Bro Pete's on it because he's collecting these gift cards. And so I went to Tim Hortons uh, to, to see if they had it in stock uh, to get it. And there was, uh, well, he looked homeless. So there was like a dude who saw me with my, with my uh, bandana, basically looking like this. And I had sunglasses on and a hat. <laughs> and uh, he was talking a little bit closer to me. Um, but we were still distant. Definitely sticker, like, you know, there's circular, stick, st circular stickers on the floor. So we're definitely keeping our distance. Um, uh, and he was like, hey, that's a cool bandana that you got. I like your mask. And then I was like, yeah, cool. Thanks, man. And like, so we were just talking a little bit. Um, he spoke passionately. So I don't know if like there's a bigger chance of droplets being expelled pretty far. Um, but I spoke with him in the Timmy's a little bit and then you know, it was really nice. Like he actually bought another homeless guy a Tim Hortons cup, like a, a Tim Hortons coffee. So he was because he was in front of in front of the line with me, and then, like, uh, so he got two coffees, one for himself, one for, like, I'm, I'm assuming his buddy. Uh, and then I was asking if they had a Peter Bro Pete's gift card. They didn't. Uh, but we were walking. You now we were leaving around the same time, and it was really nice. This, this man who. Again, just based off entirely off of uh, a physical appearance, I would assess, or I would. There's there's a probability more than normal that he's homeless, uh, and he was carrying two cups of coffee, and he gave one of his coffees to another person that was in like a, a cart that. I also assumed just entirely, no, I didn't talk to that person, but just based off of what I saw, it seemed like all his belongings were with him in his, like, uh, cart. And he gave his, uh, that other person uh, a, a cup of Timmy's and shared a few well wishes for him and kept walking. And he would look back and kind of say a few comments to me as I'm walking, because we were walking the same direction now, outside, uh, and uh, kind of engaging in some conversation, some pleasantries and stuff, like, oh yeah, the weather's nice and stuff like that. Just <laughs> random stuff. Uh, but he was the only guy that I could think of that was like speaking kind of passionately. Uh, and, uh, but I mean, it's pure speculation. I don't blame him or anything like that. I, that's not what I, I basically rested on I don't know how I got how I contracted COVID and uh, I have no ill wish to, to that dude at all uh, or I don't want to blame anybody or homeless people or anything like that for for having it like there, there's no real blame to be placed uh, uh, although my mind of oh, like humanity's human minds like to place blame uh, there's just no blame uh, in my mind right now for it it's just trying to figure out what happened and that would be the only uh, red flag that I would potentially have but I do not uh, I do not I, I, I would still say I don't know how I caught it uh, and that was that would be the only red flag but do not conclude that that is the that's like oh that's how he got no don't don't conclude that that's how I got it um, so, but I just want to share with you that that's a red flag <laughs> for potentially how I got it. Uh, otherwise, I continue with the government's suggested protocols to keep myself safe and others safe. Always wearing a mask and, or some type of protective equipment to protect myself and others. Um, so, there is that. Um, so it's pretty late now, so I'm gonna grab some dinner. Uh, but I thought that that would be good to share with you guys. 
Uh, one, I am COVID positive. The situations and the symptoms that I've experienced. Actually, one thing that's kind of neat that uh, that happened as of last night, my taste, my sense of taste has diminished by about 90%, I would say. So when I was eating dinner yesterday, so I was already like eating dinner under the stars here because my new TV is broken. Uh, so a new opportunity is something that I've never really done before. So I brought my laptop out here to watch Jumanji the next level. Uh, hilarious, by the way, if you haven't watched it, it's, it's good entertainment. And uh, also, like The Rock also got, you know, sick. Uh, he also contracted COVID, his whole family contracted COVID. And he did a much shorter video. Uh, <laughs> in retrospect, I should really try to shorten this, uh, but I'm not going to. Um, a shorter video about um, uh, acknowledging that he had COVID and he had gone through it. Uh, whereas me, I'm actually on day four. I don't know how this is going to play out for me. Although just knowing that it has a 1% mortality rate, so 99% I have, uh, statistically speaking, I have a non-mortality rate of 99% of going through this fine. And as I'm presenting mild symptoms. But uh, yeah, I took the laptop and watched it out here uh, and watched Jumanji 2 out here and it was quite enjoyable, but I couldn't actually taste what I was eating. I didn't have a clear sense of what I was eating. I could feel the textures the same, but the taste was not strong. Even eating, for example, um, garlic, uh, which I could have garlic breath or whatever, I could not, uh, I didn't, that didn't really register to me how much garlic so I like putting in kimchi in to see like how like could I taste the kimchi like could I uh, like how is that and I like I would say 90% 90 yeah like uh, like a significant drop in my sensation of taste uh, smell likely as well um, uh, an equal drop but I haven't experimented with that that much yet uh, this this afternoon I had kamjatang again as an experiment to see uh, if I could taste it or not uh, and I'm not going to take this to the extreme of like eating chili peppers or something uh, but that definitely crosses my mind as I'm sure it crosses yours to eat a whole bunch of stuff and see what I can taste but uh, the kamjatang as well it just I didn't I didn't fully taste it the way that I know that this thing tastes. I couldn't fully taste it. So it's, uh, it's fascinating to experience this and just feeling that you could eat the texture of the pork and the rice and the soup, but the taste is muted, heavily muted taste. So that's a, a new symptom that's been presented to me as of yesterday evening most notably for me or I started observing that yesterday evening um, and I'll continue to document if I experience new symptoms as it as it happens I'll probably try to do this daily or every other day or something like that and what else I would say overall like I'm encouraged to continue to pursue the lifestyle that I have where I'm trying to be as healthy mentally and physically as possible while I have the chance to to contribute what has been invested into me from a societal perspective to try to bring a return on society's investment into me uh, by contributing back so I think it this experience so far and I mean it's I'm like four or five hours in of being made aware that I tested positive for COVID and I'm on day four of symptomatic presentation that I actually don't think now that I have COVID I don't think I'm actually going to change 
my lifestyle that much. Uh, like, I exercised today for 75 minutes, and I exercised yesterday for 60 minutes, and then on the Thursday, the worst day, I exercised for seven minutes. Uh, that was the smallest denomination of the training that I'm currently doing uh, that was available. And trying to build that consistency and that habit is important to me. And I think it going through this experience right now just reinforces that because the best thing for me to do right now is to uh, strengthen my immune system. That is what will heal me. It's not a drug. It is my own immune system adapting to it. And my immune system works better when I feed it the right nutrients, my body is regularly exercised, and I try to reduce the level of stress through meditation, and mostly through meditation, I would say, uh, and recognizing where there's tension in my body, um, or recognizing the thoughts in my mind, to try to uh, be aware of them instead of just being reactionary automatically to them which could lead to negative outcomes. So I think continuing in learning and growing in, uh, in physical exercise, in mental health, in meditation, in trying to give and make the world somehow better while you have a chance to is like this just accelerates or just this is just another reminder but uh, to me this isn't a, a heart attack at 50 moment and now I'm going to stop eating bacon and I'm gonna go run every day thing I'm I've already had a general or a, an appreciation of the vulnerability and the fragility of my body and mind and so I was already motivated to live in a way that would maximize the ability of or try an, an attempt to maximize the health of my body and mind. Attempt being the uh, operative word. I don't know how well I'm succeeding at that considering I'm actually COVID positive. But <laughs> uh, no matter what happens, I try to be ready for whatever happens. So being aware that I will die and that there are great limitations to my body and my mind has already early on had encouraged me to seek what creates meaning in my life and how I would choose to live that more purposefully uh, kind of how like what Chadwick uh, Boseman was saying in some of his speeches talking about living with purpose and though you know for him he knew he was well I don't know how much like I don't know what he knew and I'm sure he knew a lot but I mean like he lived with purpose regardless of the situation and I think in the same way it's kind of a similar thing like like life just goes on and I'm gonna keep living out the best life that I can which thankfully is the current way that I live anyways I hope and that will continue to change as I continue to learn and I'll continue to adapt new habits and new mindsets and new exercises and and hopefully achieve superior outcomes but yeah it really just emboldens me to not care to care but not not to be discouraged by what other the fear don't let the fear of what other people think discourage you from doing what you know is good and what you know is right and I think that so far that is what I am one of the key things taking away even sharing this video is incredibly vulnerable in a sense in many ways uh, hopefully not commercially to my mask to my shield uh, but it's highly vulnerable and you can have a lot of negative feelings towards 
me or avoid me or whatever it is but I know that this is a positive thing to do if I ignore the judgments and the labels that people may or may not have for me so um, yeah this is a really long-winded video sorry also if you've been wondering this is uh, I'm just looking at this at the thing curry fish baller uh, from Mr. Dim Sum so check it check out his uh, insta if you like if you like this peeping guy out of, <laughs> out of this hoodie the whole video uh, if you watch through this thank you and uh, yeah these those are my current thoughts as of September 26th I believe day four into COVID keep safe